Time flies. Hey, it's Wednesday, the 25th, okay, of May, uh, 2021, and we're going to continue on with our journey. All right. So, so uh, as promised, we kind of got a kind of a global perspective of what's going on. All right. So these are some big uh, socioeconomic issues and also personal issues. And so, uh, speaking of personal, let's go ahead and and do a drill down in terms of um, U.S. domestic issues. Okay. And really. Um, um, a real good opportunity to expose you to this amazing uh, group of researchers called the Pew Research Center. Uh, it's They're always hiring, so if you're looking for uh, a job that's uh, all about making, um, doing data analysis and making projections, predictions about where we're, go we're going, I would check these guys out. All right, so um, again, my video is going to go right here. And um, so there's a, a, just a couple of articles, real brief articles to look at that, that are really informative. And from here, you'll get, you'll get an, a, a feel for what the Pew Foundation does. And uh, what we've done is, um, is uh, Julie went through and she gave a, a, a quick overview of what all the articles are all about. OK. And so in the first article, um, it's it's really talking about uh, defining generations, okay? And this is, you know, these are just big swaths of people that move through the system, all right? Cohorts, all right? So I was a baby boomer. Um, and then, um, you know, there's the, the Gen Xers, that was Julia, and then there's the um, Millennials, and, and we're gonna talk about you guys, the Gen Zs, you know? And um, so each, each of us have been molded by, you know, the time, uh, in environments that we uh, grew up in, all right? Um, you know, whether, you know, you guys are being certainly influenced by the pandemic at a real critical time, you know? Um, you know, it, it, when I was going through the system, um, uh, the entire educational system had to adapt to such an enormous glut in boomers. And so they we're building, you know, elementary schools and building high schools and boom, they built the Cal State system, the UC system again to, Kind of accommodate us, you know, and then having that in place was really good for, um, you know, the the continued population momentum of us having kids. And even though I didn't have a lot, you know, still my kids are going through the system and benefiting from that. So that's um, what the first article is about. And then the second article um, is, uh, you know, again gets in and and does a little bit more of a drill down on the baby boomers of what you know what was going on there, and then uh, and then lastly, then we look at kind of sociological trends, a really cool, fun, interactive um, uh, uh, article that the Pew Foundation found. I, I went through. So what we do always, you know, just because you can never, never rely on the internet, we always have the link. I find the link most most uh, uh, entertaining. Um, so here's the link right here for the first one. Um, because uh, first of all, it just it's easy, easier on the eyes to read, and secondly, it allows you to do, you know, more in-depth um, analysis if, you, if your curiosity is um, is picked by this. Okay, um, there's always a PDF file that we print out right here. So here's the PDF file. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on this link right here. All right, so um, it goes, it's a 2019 article, and it was, you know, again, oh, the process that, that, that went around. And, and, you know, this this is like, you know, intellectualizing, academicizing the process of, of defining groups so that we can um, also look at um, lots of sociological factors, economic factors that are influencing them, and then... By, when you when you have this, you can develop policies, or let's say you run a business, you can run projections, and um, and market and and do sales off of these each of these individuals. So so you know a big quagmire as you see right here is what do we name you guys? <laughs> and so this was you would call um, Generation I or I Generation, post millennials, and then Gen Z one out, right? So you guys are the Gen Zers, and. Um, um, and we see um, right here, you know, the, the structures um, as defined, okay? And roughly, this is, you know, when people were born, okay? So, um, you know, I was born uh, in 56, okay? So I'm right here, all right? My parents, the silent generation, you know, they were down here in this region right here, World War II, Depression era babies, okay? Um, and then we have the, the, you know, the Gen Xers, uh, you know, so this is, you know, roughly 
um, Julia, you know, um, to, you know, she was 62, so she's right here on the border. And then, um, and then, you know, if, if we had had our act together, then our children would be millennials and then, uh, and then, um, and then Gen Zers, but we didn't. We delayed reproduction for a lot of um, socioeconomic reasons, and so, so we kind of skipped a beat. So we have Gen Z kids, but we are really this generation, right? All right. So that's what that's all about, and just how it's all defined, okay? And then um, from there, so you know, again, not a huge article, but still, it's kind of cool about how um, different agencies go ahead and define things. And then from there, we jump in and we kind of look at. Um, some of the factors that are that are, that influence the, each of the generations. Okay, so we look at some some trends that shape the USA. The USA. This is 2018, so there'll be more. Okay, um, first of all, because it's it's called um, population momentum. Okay, even though there was a lot of us. Okay, there's going to be even more children okay because you know we're we're gonna have two kids three kids there's immigration of this um uh, millennial generation and so so they begin to outnumber us and guess what happens okay the boomers are dying off right so it is what it is and so 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 the millennials right now are the most influential generation that we have in our country and um and we can see right here okay um some some trends, other trends that are happening. So we see the millennials are, are, are most influential. And we see, and this was really, this exploded. This is 2016. Um, it uh, really, really, really uh, took off, of course, during the Great Recession, where, uh, our, where people lost jobs, affordability for housing became a huge issue. And so there was a big growth in multi-generation households, okay? Um, the pandemic really, really accelerated this too. So if we extend this out here to 2020, 2021, you would see this big jump. Okay. Now the other thing that's happening is, you know, <clears throat> our economy has just been clicking, clicking, clicking. Big part of that also is, um, um, you know, to to save um, a lot of businesses. Uh, the uh, federal government reduced the prime interest rate, which means which means the lending rate that they lend money to banks, and then the banks in turn reduce the rate that they lend money to you. So money is cheap right now, okay? And so as a result, um, people have been buying up housing, those people that have money to buy up expensive housing, especially in places like SoCal, New York, Florida, where it's really expensive. And why am I getting to this? Well, um, in some ways, you guys are gonna be forced into thinking about multi-generational households, the family collective where you pool your resources and figure out a contract where you can all live together. It's actually, you know, going old school. It's the way the world was forever until the U.S. kind of set its own pace of, of, of independence. And, and it, it makes life difficult. So, so I was just talking with Carson about this. You know, um, he's a, a class member. Um, you know, real estate developers are, are taking note of this, okay, in, in, in developing huge communities that, that are designed for families to live together, for family groups to live together, so aunties and uncles, you know, even the ones that are logical families, you know, like my, you know, the Flores family that is, you know, basically my brother that I grew up with, because we're friends, and that way you can all rely on each other, okay, help each other out in terms of both adult daycare and child daycare, um, and also, you um, you can then um, help each other out financially, and just the so social hub of of, um, of happiness and gratitude of having people surround you that know you and support you. So, so yeah, that's a big trend, you know, to think about. All right. Um, so the other thing that's happening is since it's so difficult to launch into this independence, okay, financially, is that um, it, the the um, the period of human development, if you want to call that, is being extended, okay? Now, it, we're not developing any slower physically, okay, mentally. However, the competitive socioeconomic developmental period has gotten bigger and bigger and bigger, okay? It used to be a, a select few went to college. We're going to look at that this, you know, during my generation, it was, whoa, it was totally unique. You're going to college. Everybody goes to college now. It's like prep school, okay? So then you got to go to college. 
and then maybe even go get your master's or you go to college and then you start working. So it delays your entry into the you know traditional adulthood of getting married and having kids. Okay. And then a lot of people are figuring out along the way, you know what, you know, I can do this alone. I don't need to get married, you know. I can have kids alone. Okay, I don't need to get married. And so we see this this significant trend of a drop in marriage rate. Okay. All right. Um we're also seeing um, that um, richer countries get richer. Um, poorer countries are fully aware of this. And um, you, compare, um, you compare the socioeconomics of being really, really poor, difficult lives, trying to make ends meet, along with political strife and war. And guess what happens? Boom. You look at lots and lots of immigrants. And you can see there's just tons and tons of immigrants Remember from, uh, we talked about it last time where we looked at um, the uh, global aging, looking at at underdeveloped <clears throat> countries, okay, and um, versus developed countries, uh, developing countries versus developed countries. And this is part of your CT1 too. So, so it's a big trend. And then the developed countries have to figure out a way to shoulder this. It's, it's you know, um, it's a difficult process, you know, and uh, especially when people travel far, far, far distances, you can't just pluck them and put them back. OK. All righty. Um, what we had a political scenario. OK. Um, um, we had, you know, during the previous administration, we had uh, a ban on certain religious groups. OK. That's a, that's a moving target. OK. Um, and we see that um, um, some groups, um, those with college degrees, okay, there was a big rise, okay. So very, very cool analysis of population trends in the United States, okay. All right, now let's go back to um, our generation. So this is the third article right here. It's a really cool article, and you can see how um, the the cohort that you grow up with, the time, the era, all right. The sociology, the economics, okay? It's kind of, you know, a tired statement. But you can see how these trends change dramatically. Um, again, we put <clears throat> the, um, the uh, um, PDF file. It's not interactive. This is the bomb right here. So we get in here and, <clears throat> and we look, we're going to compare uh, each of the generations over 50 years and just look at these transitions, all right? So this is the cool interactive right here, all right? And um, so we see we're looking at um, in the year 2017, so this is when they made this interactive, okay? Um, we're looking at um, the white population, Hispanic, Black, Asian, and other populations, okay? Um, we then, um, so this is our readout, and then we look at each of the generations, okay? And so we can see um, um, when we look at my parents' generation, you look at me, and then transition to Julia, <clears throat> and then your parents, potentially the millennials, okay, and how the racial composition transitioned, okay, from when my parents, 79% of the U.S. population was white, whereas with your parents, 56% of the U.S. population is white. Okay, and you see um, the biggest growth being in the Hispanic population right here. Okay, all right. Um, so cool demographics. Then we can look at um, again the socioeconomics of marital status. Okay, so we're gonna click right there, and again, you know, um, we see right here in 2017. Okay, the composition. Now we see that my parents' generation, um, 52% were married, okay, at this point in time, okay? All right, you know, you expect more marriage, except you see right here the big transition is sadly, uh, people begin to die off. So there's the, the, the widowed population was enormous, okay? And that's something you, you, you would predict, okay? Then we see here 60% uh, married in boomers, uh, Gen Xers, okay, 66%. So, so this is Julie and I, and then your parents, 37% married, uh, married. Now that's a big change, big change, okay. 57% never married, okay. Big change, okay. Um, and we can see um, the numbers are very low for that down here as well, okay. All right, here, um, 6% divorced, as we see here, right there, okay. 
All righty. Um, you see the never married numbers down here? They grew and grew and grew from 4 to 10 to 17 to 57. Kind of a trip, okay? Male education, okay? Been constant, okay? All right? Uh, now, nothing's changed in terms of um, the, the uh, outcomes of growing up as a male, okay? Um, we, you know, this is, this is who we are. If you look um, um, in general, there's been, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, just, just, just really just nothing's really changed. Okay. In terms of the percentages, which is kind of surprising. You would think that, that there, there'd be more college, a slight, you know, shift in college education, but the female education is where you really see this transition. Okay. You see that, um, the, um, the younger the generation, you see there's more and more and more women being college educated, more and more independent. Okay. We can do the same thing with the male labor force right here. Um, again, the la labor force is different because you know, you're going to age out, right? So very few people um, um, are, are employed right here, okay? Um, and, um, and so we see this is civilian employed, okay, right here. This, and then um, we see the boomers, the transition, okay? Now let's look at the female labor force again. And you can see, you know, again, look at the uh, transition. Household incomes. Um, you know, very interesting to look at. You're not making a lot of money when you're retired, okay? Um, so uh, this is when, you know, at this time, the, the biggest earners were the Gen Xers, okay? Um, and then we can look right in there, okay? So again, it's kind of uh, real interesting. Um, did you live in rural or do you live in urban centers? And you see, again, um, uh, most uh, people are metropolitan. All right. Um, this is the overview right here, okay? Again, going um, over generations in terms of uh, being educated, okay? We go from silent to boomer to Gen X to millennial, and you just see the whole level of education is going up, but especially in women, especially in women, all right? Definition of um, generations back then. So pretty cool, pretty cool stuff, all right? All right, so now we have a feel of everybody. And oh, I should have said this, open your quiz, okay? So you should open your quiz and, um, and, and do that first. So you know, I'll think about that next time to remind you, always open your quiz. I'll, I'll send that out uh, in, in, the, in the text of the email. All right, so, so what are the consequences of these, these dynamics, okay? Let's look directly at you in terms of one big socioeconomic thing, and that's, um, that's housing. Okay, how are you guys going to afford housing? So this goes back to what Carson and I were talking about. Maybe we can do this mental, uh, this multi-generational thing. All right, all right. So we have right here the, in this article, um, and again, this is your discussion. Um, um, if you can get the Washington Post, if, if you have a subscription, if not, here's a PDF, uh, uh, an actual um, uh, uh, Microsoft Word doc that I made that has the article. The bottom line here, we see here, we're looking at um, the slump in home ownership that has happened, okay? So each, there's a start date right here where my arrow is, you know, for the, this is the millennials of the yellow, the orange is Gen X, okay? So uh, during this time period, going from, um, going from 2008 to 2019, okay? Because we're looking at age. This is like home ownership as a function of age right here. So you wouldn't predict, you know, somebody in their 20s have own ownership, okay? But we come out here into 30, and you can see the millennials are way, way lagging behind for a 30-year-old, okay? We can look at 30-year-olds right here at Gen X. They were doing better, okay? As they come up here into being a 45-year-old, okay, right here, you know, roughly 25% home ownership. That sucks, okay? Then you compare it back to their parents, okay? And you can see that almost 50% home ownership, okay? So it has to do with affordability, okay? And, and, and the cost of housing. So this was an article from 2020 showing shifts in cost of housing, okay? So um, this was, you know, again, over a, uh, roughly a, a little over a year period, a year and a half period. And we see, you know, the, the housing took a little slump right here, okay? Um, and then it took off again. And, and if we were to project this, it'd be the housing market has just gone nuts. Okay. So, um, so it becomes down to affordability. Okay. And so this is a really, really cool article right here, our website that I encourage you to kind of go in and take a look at. Um, they talk about um, 
um, the cost of, of housing and what a burden is. So not only for older people, um, so this shows you it's a huge burden for older people, but it's a burden for you guys too. You know, what are we going to do about this, okay? Um, and uh, it's a bigger, bigger burden when you live alone, okay? And so we see this over here that, that, that of course, the projection of people living alone is going up and up and up and up. So this is 2018, 2028, and 2038. So there's got a lot, of, a lot of single households, and um, um, yeah, that's you know it, it's much easier, easier to make ends meet when you when you have a team, okay? Um, and then these are the prompts that you ask that you're going to address in your discussion. You know, um, your grandparents, okay? Are you going to let them live alone, right? Um, well, let's think about the discussion here about the solution to this for you and your family, okay? How about multi-generational house and household? Kind of articulate, create a future where um, uh, multi-generation households exist and where your family can pool all of your resources to make for a much better living situation, okay? So um, we'll come right in here. Again, this was put together in 2019. There's a whole document you can download about housing right here. And you know, for those of you guys who are into real estate development, it would be really interesting for you to kind of look it over. But this interactive kind of tells it all, okay? So um, first of all, if we look right here, this is looking at um, uh, basically uh, groups of individuals. We're going to look at 50 to 65-year-olds, okay? And we look over here on the top, uh, the top 10th percentile, the wealthiest, and then the very bottom percentile are going to be the poorest. The, and we can see what their annual income is, the household income. So here in 1980, you know, okay, the bottom 10th percentile is uh, 14 and a half thousand per year. The top was uh, about 140,000 per year, 140,527. We see over this transition of um, basically almost 40 years, okay, um, that poor people just stay poor, okay? You see that their income, if anything, went down. Down here, whereas the rich get richer. Okay, so we went from the average, okay, in the blue, of 140 to an average over here of 203,000. Okay, now you can uh, come up here and click on here and look at 65-year-old um, households, and a big part of, the, of their wealth is their housing. Um, um, again, and um, and um, uh, their retirement income. Now we see, you know. They have less income right here. All right, so the the 90th percentile is 78, and you look down here how it's poverty level for the um, for the bottom percentile 10 percent um, at bottom 10 percent of 10 thousand dollars, and then you can see up here again um, over the last 30 years the rich do get richer, okay, and the poor stay poor right around the, you know 10 to 12 thousand, whereas the rich went from 70 to 140. They doubled their income. All right. All right, so, but you know, again, this is just the top 10%, the blue, the rest are just lagging, you know, uh, behind. So then we can go back over here, okay, and uh, go back into the housing site. And this is a really cool site. You just click on this, on this map, and it takes a look at the burden of, co of, house, of housing, okay? So we can look at um, the, the cost burden, okay? We can look at all households and you, you see that it comes up over here and it gives you the percent of your um, monthly income, annual income that goes towards just the cost of housing, okay? And we look over here at all, all households, we'll see that people that own, boom, do much better, all right? So it's, the blue means you're safe and green. This is a much less of a burden, okay? You see yellow, okay? That, um, that means it's more of a burden. Okay, that's what that is all about. Then we take a look and see um, people that rent earn less money, so a lot more of their money goes towards um, goes towards housing. And you see that um, again, it's a, a significantly significantly greater burden for for the people that are red. All right, okay, very cool. So that was 65 and over. You can compare that now to um, uh, people that are 50 to 64. And you see it's better, okay? The problem is when you're 65 and older, you're not, you're not making money, okay? You're retired, all right? Um, you see the transition that happens when you go back and forth in renters between people 50 to 64 versus 65 and older. 
that uh, people that are 65 and older do worse. The red is an, is an alarm. We can look again here at um, people that own, okay? And again, owners do better, okay? And 65 and older owners, okay? All right, so um, it's about the same. Awesome. Okay, so that's it. Get in there, guys. Mix it up. Consider these things that I was talking about. I'll be giving you a heads up um, uh, about the critical thinking assignment next week. I'm going to give you a really easy how-to video. You'll see it's fun. It's interactive. You'll have no problem with this, all right? Okay. All right, guys. Well, peace for today. Um, and that's our third lecture of the week. And uh, I'll be coming down the pike with uh, more lectures um, uh, uh, probably at the end of the week and on Sunday. So from there, look at that. There's my family. Um, uh, you guys take care.